Hi guys, I thought I'd do a voiceover for this part of the video because I wanted to highlight some of the great vendors that I've seen at Glasgow School of Yarn this year. This is the Border Mill and they have a yarn that's an alpaca and rose fibre mix which I thought was very special. Seely McWheely have a beautiful selection of yarns with some metallic speckles in them. They also have these fibres with which you can spin which I thought was very nice and pretty. And then we have Edelweiss fibers, which have a lovely selection of lush yarns and a lot of solid colors as well, which I feel like you don't see often for hand dyed yarns. And this is Athel and Joan, and they are a button company that are actually based in London, and they're a zero waste company. She makes her buttons out of resin, and even the little speckles you see that's chopped up buttons that didn't work out. And she also does some magnetic pin tidies, which are quite useful. Then we have Kate Miss Yarns, who hold their sheep solely for the purpose of getting yarn from them. And they've started dyeing it into really beautiful, vibrant colors, but they still have their natural undyes as well. Then Nervous Fiber, Charlotte. I love, 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 love her colors. I've knitted with her yarn before. It holds up really well when washed. And I just love the color palettes that she's using in her dyes. Now Woolen Flower Jewels is also a Glasgow based yarn dyer and she only uses plant based dyes. Lovely colour palette, very often solid colours, they knit up wonderfully and she does embroidery threads as well which look absolutely gorgeous. Next up is Tilly Flop which are cards and postcards, tea towels all based around crafting and knitting which I thought was very unique, haven't seen that before, and they also do sock sleeves if you're gifting socks this year. Next up, Zakami, Edinburgh base, really lovely colors, they really spoke to me, very soft, super interesting bases that she's using, definitely go check her out, she's got a wonderful selection. The Lonely Knitter really caught my eyes for the vibrancy and the contrast between the different skeins. The Little Grey Girl is one of my absolute favorites. Every year I come, I get something from her stand. I love that she does these speckled yarns paired with solid colors so that you have a really nice matching set if you want. And I can never pass anything up from there. Last but not least, Flora Fibers. They only use vegan yarn bases and have loads of recycled yarn. Very interesting, haven't seen that before. Check that out if that's sort of your thing. And if you want to see what I got, wait to the end of the video. Hi everybody, welcome to episode 10 of the Wild Knits podcast. My name is Maria, I live in Glasgow, I'm a mum of a one and a half year old who's very energetic and doesn't like to nap at the moment. <laughs> And I am a new bee knitwear designer. My first pattern is coming out in about a week's time actually when you guys are seeing this. Oh my god, it's <laughs> crazy. It's actually this. Ta da! It's the Maman sweater. And yeah, like I said, a week's time it'll be out. I'm very, very excited. The test knit has been great. Everybody has been absolutely lovely and created really beautiful versions of this. And now it's just fine polishing and just a few last loose strings to tie and yeah then it'll be out in the world and the baby version is also being test knitted at the moment um, hopefully we'll be able to release it around December time early December maybe um, yeah but the idea is that it's a matching set for a mom and a kid and so the maman a baby sweater set is coming your way soon <laughs> On this podcast, I talk about all things knitting, anything related to yarn and knitting patterns, things that I'm knitting, things that I've cast off recently, yarns that I bought, notions that I bought. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about in this podcast. And the channel itself is kind of developing into a bit more than just the podcast. I like to dabble into a few reviews of things. I've done a vlog recently and a bit of a knit and chat. So yeah, kind of just whatever I fancy, um, themed around yarn and <laughs> knitting. That's what this is about. Um, if you like that, if that's your jam, consider subscribing and hit the old like button and leave a comment. There's always something that I chat about at the end where I like you guys to get interactive. And everybody is always so nice in the comments and I love the exchange and how you guys tell me how 
what you're knitting or the other day I was talking about how I came to knitting in one of the knit and chat videos and everyone was chiming in and telling me how they came to the craft which was so lovely to hear and there seems to be this common theme of everybody finding their way into knitting via their mums or grandmothers which I really love because it's a a bit of tradition heritage that's kind of continued on and I think everybody really feels connected to their loved ones and dear ones when they pick up this hobby and continue the tradition on in the family so I really loved reading these comments yeah I don't know what else to update you on everything has been a bit hectic and like there's a lot of work going on for me on the weekends because I'm looking full-time after Emma so there's not much time during the week for me to actually do anything beyond a few Instagram photos. And so it's the weekends and evenings when I'm working. So I feel like everything, every time is just flying by, especially in the run up to um, the release of the pattern, because there's so many other things involved in it. I produced a lot of tutorials um, with the technical or like on the technical aspects of it. And then there's the website to build, there's Ravelry to build. So yeah, it's been a lot that's been going on. <laughs> but I'm loving every second of it. I'm honestly enjoying it so much. And yeah, I just, I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to do this. Anyway, rambling over. I don't have much time today, so we'll just dive right into it. <laughs> And I'm really, I'm just buzzing to start off with my one finished object. I'll show you. It has literally just been finished five minutes ago, <laughs> but it's the bunny sweater. For those of you who've seen the last episode, I was talking about this in the last episode because I got the yarn back then. And it is a little bunny sweater that I designed for Emma for her Halloween costume. She's a big, big bunny fan at the moment bunny flowers, teddy bears and Peppa Pig. That's the only thing she'll wear at the minute. So yeah, it's interesting. But um, I thought maybe for Halloween I could put her in a little bunny costume, bunny outfit. And I really wanted to knit her a sweater. So I set out to design one and I had this vision of this boucle yarn, just a simple round yoke sweater, that's all it is. And then I would knit separate bunny ears, put them on and then a little face on it. And I think it turned out so cute. <laughs> For my first try, I think it really did not disappoint. Um, the yarn that I've used is Alpaca Boucle from Drops, which is a, I think, worsted Aran weight yarn. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about the yarn. <laughs> I, have, I think I'm starting to develop, I have developed a love-hate relationship with the boucle yarn because I love the way it feels. It's very soft and it's so squishy. It's so like, it's just like a little cloud, really. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I do not love knitting with it. Oh my word. Knitting with it is just about the worst thing ever because the little loops of the individual strand, don't know these little loops, your needle constantly gets caught in them and then pulls on them. And as you pull on that, it'll weaken the, the strand itself. And this will not show at all. But if you pull on it, the strand itself here weakens and breaks. And so I've had a few instances where that yarn got thinner and thinner. And here you can kind of see, I've just pulled on it for a little bit. There's just not much structure to it and it just, will come apart um yeah so that's been a little bit of a problem throughout um so it's not my most favorite thing in the world to knit with to be honest with you yeah i definitely think i'll use it again maybe i'll try the boucle from a different company to see if that problem with the integrity of it persists and if that's just something you won't get around with with this type of yarn or if it's something to do with the drops yarn i don't know but I really enjoyed it. Um, the other thing that I do need to correct is the gauge. I think my gauge was off. I did a swatch, but what I didn't do is measure the swatch before I blocked. And so I used the gauge after blocking, but it turns out that it shrinks quite a lot when you wash it. So I had to stretch it massively. 
and it kind of, I don't know if you can see that very well, it created a few more holes than I would have liked. So it made it look a bit more holy than I would have wanted it to look. But yeah, I think that's easily corrected. You just have to, just have to redo the whole gauge measurement. But that's fine. It still looks cute and lovely and I really love it and I hope Emma will. And I don't think the yarn is scratchy, so I'm sure she'll wear it. And yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think. If you'd love this as a pattern, I can write it up and test it as a pattern. If I do, I think I will actually add maybe a couple more designs into it and make it a pack because I have a couple more ideas for different animals, but the base of the jumper would be the same. So there wouldn't be any different design to the basic jumpers. I think making it into a pack would be better than trying like making three different patterns for what's essentially the same jumper. So yeah, so let me know if you guys would like this to be a pattern. Um, maybe just to say I've knitted the ears separately. You can see that they're quite like thick and they come out. So they are knitted separately in uh, on the round on tiny needles. And this pink in the middle is also a drops yarn. It's the brushed alpaca from drops, which is the same weight as the boucle alpaca. And that's why I used it for the inside of the ear. And then the embroidery took me forever <laughs> and just about two tries for every single thing. But I've used a fingering weight. It was, it was just alpaca from, from drops in a dark gray, held double to do the eyes. And then the same alpaca for the nose and then the same yarn again for the little mouth. And I have actually also sewn down the bunny ears so that they don't flop around. So yeah, it was good fun to knit. Um, I think it looks very cute. If I do bring it out as a pattern, I'll have to do a little bit more, not troubleshooting, but just I'll change a few things. And yeah, let me know maybe in the description box below if you would like this to come out as a pattern. I could actually do it in time for Easter. <laughs> so you could knit your kids a little Easter outfit. <laughs> um, anyway, that's my one finished object. Um, let's get into which so the first whip is something that was a whip last time we talked. <laughs> it's my easy TV knitting because it's a pattern that already exists that I don't have to do any kind of troubleshooting or oops, yeah, I just rolled out um, any kind of troubleshooting for. And yeah, it's just a little cardigan for Emma. I have finished the body and I'm starting one sleeve right now and then I will also need to do the button band still. There you go. It's in this beautiful, so the pattern is the Claudita cardigan by in the Making Memories book by Claudia Quentinilla, if that's how you pronounce her last name. <laughs> and the yarn is from the little grey girl, it's called Avenel. Uh, I forgot the base of it but I'll all I'll put it all down below so that you can see. And it's this lovely, beautiful, purpley, irrigated yarn, which I fell in love with last year at Glasgow School of Yarn, which we'll come to talk about later. And I absolutely love, love, love how it knits and how it looks as a finished piece, as a garment. There isn't too much variation. I think it's kind of just enough to give it interest. It reminds me a bit of Scottish Heather, <laughs> to be honest. And I think it'll fit lovely into the kind of color palette of Emma's wardrobe. That's why I decided to use it for this project. And yeah, I am, like I said, I'm finished with the body. I'm just doing the sleeves now and then button bands. So hopefully not much longer, but I'm not rushing myself on this one. The pattern is actually really nice and easy to knit from. The special thing about this pattern is, and that's why I decided to do it, there is an embroidery of flowers on the collar, kind of going along the um, round neck collar. And I think that's looking very lovely. And I would really like to do that. I love knitwear embroidery and I want to try out a little bit more of it. So hence why giving this cardigan a go. Um, yeah, I don't know what else there is to say about it. I did, modification wise, I did omit the short rows at the hem so just before 
you do the ribbing for the hem she's adding in a few more short rows I guess to shape the back of it but kind of felt like it wasn't all that necessary and I'm playing a bit of yarn chicken with this project because I have I think 60 meters less than what is stated as the yardage for this project and so I decided to try and omit it in order to like make it fit but to be honest I still have quite a lot left I don't know how much that is in weight but that's definitely going to get me through two sleeves and the two button bands so yeah maybe it's famous last words <laughs> we'll see we'll see next time I guess <laughs> but yeah that's the Claudita cardigan and then the next whip is the baby sweater there's not much to see <laughs> show you there it's another baby sweater I finished the button band because I had to do a tutorial on the button band that's why I had to cast on another one I was actually wanting to cast this on in the new drops daisy which I was very curious to test but it didn't arrive in time for when I had to film the tutorial so yeah none of that um, this is something that I had in my stash it's Sunday's double Sunday and I'm going to do the stripes with the marzipan color there we are and this color ooh, I actually forgot I'll put it down below again um, but it's a lovely dusky old kind of pink and as any time that you're knitting with double Sunday I really think it knits up very pretty it's very defined very easy to knit with but what I don't like about this yarn is that it pills really easily and quickly. We'll see. I'm really curious to see how the the drops daisy. I'm just I've just got some there. <laughs> I'll show you when I show my acquisitions. I'm really curious to see how drops daisy will knit up and and last compared to the drops uh, compared to the double Sunday. Quick intermezzo. <laughs> uh, my husband and Emma came back from the shops. So I wanted to say hi quickly. I think I was talking about drops, um, daisy and Sunday, double Sunday. Do you know that actually just leads me right into maybe the acquisition section. But yeah, like I said, I wanted to make another baby sweater, which is the junior version of the Momo sweater that I've designed. And I wanted to make it with these colors. And it's the new drops daisy, like I said, um, it's 100% merino, non superwash. And I wanted to have the dark green as the main color and then the light kind of marzipan color as the stripes. But it didn't arrive in time, so I couldn't cast on with that. But that is not a problem because I wanted to try out this yarn anyways. Because um, like I said, I really wanted to compare it to the Double Sunday from Santney's Garn. Yeah, they are very similar. However, the Santney's one does have a thicker strand in itself. The Sunny strand is a little bit thicker than the Drops Daisy strand. They feel similar, however, I think the Drops Daisy actually does feel a little bit softer. So it'll be interesting to see how this wears, if it pills just as much. But yeah, I'm glad that they finally came out with a DK weight merino that's a non superwash. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I've got the foresty green, like I said, and the marzipan color. And since I have it left over now, I think what I'll do is I will actually use the marzipan color as a base for a leaf cardigan I want to cast on by the Crea Bea. And the green I will probably use for another Moby sweater for Emma because she outgrew her one from last year. And I feel like it's a really kind of timeless classic knit and I really enjoyed knitting it. So yeah, I think I have enough for a Moby sweater for her for this year. Um, yeah, so that's the first yarn that I got and then as you will have seen in the little intro It was Glasgow School of Yarn this weekend. It's actually today. Well, I went today Ooh. Got myself a deluxe ticket So I got the very special Glasgow School of Yarn bag Oh, so nice <laughs> I'm so excited. This is literally I was looking forward to it so so much and I made myself a little list of what I wanted to buy yarn for and I wanted to cast on a leaf cardigan by like I said the Crea Bear and I'm going to use the 
Drops Daisy Marzipan color as a base and then I had two skeins from Nervous Fibers that I would love to use as the contrast stripes. So the colors that I wanted to, that I already had in stash and that I want to use for this cardigan are by Ner Nervous Fibers and it's this bluey orangey speckled yarn which is in a DK weight. Yep. Tipro, Tipro is the color name. I don't know, Tipro I think it's called. And then this colorway, which is called Shore, which is a beigey brown, not speckled, just lightly irrigated. Very lovely, very simple yarn. So I wanted these two as stripes, and then I wanted to find something that would go with it. And the first one that I got is this kind of dark yellowy or can you say orca color? Hmm, don't really know. It's very golden. It's a bit more colorful than the other ones, but I really, really like it. And the next one is this. I don't even know what to describe it as. There's pinks, oranges, browns. I just love it. I think this one looks so, so beautiful. Really caught my eye. This one and the yellow that I just showed you is in a fingering weight, however, so I'll have to hold it double. So it's these colors as the stripes, and then, oh my God, I can't hold it all. And then this marzipan as the base. I think it's gonna look smashing. I can't wait to cast it on. Maybe it's gonna be my Christmas knitting, Christmas break knitting. <laughs> such a bad YouTuber. Maybe I should actually explain what Glasgow School of Yarn is. Glasgow School of Yarn is the local yarn festival that we have uh, in Glasgow, organized, I think, by our local yarn store, which is the Yarn Cake. And it's loads of, I think, almost exclusive Scottish dyers, manufacturers of anything to do with uh, crochet or knitting. And it's a big, big show in the Trades Hall in Glasgow. It's over two floors. And this year they are also having talks. They usually have workshops, but I think it's the first time that they've had talks. I did go to one about ethical sheep farming, which was very inspiring, very, very interesting. Graham from Kate Ness was honestly like, it's one of these people, he can just talk and you just want to listen to him. He was very, very inspiring and he just lives and breathes for his sheep <laughs> multiple times throughout the talk he was saying oh i actually miss them so much they'll be so cross with me because i left them <laughs> and you could just hear in his voice and how he was talking that he really cares for them and yeah it was very interesting to see what it's like for sheep farmers who exclusively breed their sheep and have their flocks for getting yarn and making yarn so it's very very interesting I went round multiple times, as you do. My strategy is always go in, check everything out, see the ones that I like, come in with project ideas, and then go around a second time and then buy. So I feel like that strategy has paid off all the years that I've been going. And so I employed it again this year. <laughs> um, so the next thing that I got was this skein which this is this is my wild card. I did not plan anything for this. I just found it so pretty. And she had a sock knit up in this. And when I saw it, I just knew I had to get it. Um, it is Coveney, Coveney? Hmm. from the Little Grey Girl. So last year I bought that purpley yarn that, I made, that I'm making into that Clorita cardigan for Emma. And this year I bought this one, which is in a DK. It is superwash merino and nylon. So, and I do think this will make beautiful socks. Maybe with the heel and toe in a purple or in a blue. Oh, that'd be lovely, in a blue. Mm. Yeah, I really love this one. It feels very soft and I just cannot wait, cannot wait. I really love stuff by the little gray girl as well. Um, Next up, um, maybe I'll actually show you the Kate Ness yarn that I got. So this is from Kate Ness Yarns. Um, like I said, Graham is the one farmer <laughs> and he looks after, I think he said 270 sheep and he exclusively holds the sheep to make yarn, which is I think very rare and special. And he produces this wonderful yarn with it. This is actually a mix. This is alpaca and Whoa, yep. And it's just DK Natural Black, it's called. 
and I plan on making myself a wonderful pair of mittens with this. Um, it is, it's not, it's not, it's alpaca blend, so it's not super scratchy. Um, that's my only kind of issue with wool that's not mixed with anything else. It's, uh, it is a bit too scratchy for me, but definitely mittens will be a great choice with this. And it's, it is coming across a bit black on camera, but it is actually a dark brown color. So yeah, I can't wait to try this out and it with this. And I do urge you to check out Graham on Instagram and his little flock of sheep. He was very, very cool, very inspiring to hear him talk about his passion for holding sheep and for creating yarn and farming. Um, the next thing that I got was this yarn. It is from the border mill and it's alpaca rose and that is not a fancy name of an alpaca breed or anything it is literally the fibers from rose stems wo worked into a yarn and then held together with this alpaca and it's creating I just found it so interesting it's creating a very soft fabric and the lady who sold it was saying it's a very durable fabric as well she said, don't make it into socks. It's not sock durable, <laughs> but she said it is a fairly durable fabric. I think this will look lovely as part of the color scheme that I have going on for my sweet shop blanket that I'm planning on making. So I thought a little green in there would be really lovely. Talking of sweet shop blanket, I'll show you the next one that I got, which is this wonderful, oh, it was coming across very differently. Well looks very gray on camera but it's actually a kind of muted blue it's from wool and flower who's um so that's jules's company and jules is a local yarn dyer here in glasgow and yeah she only dyes her yarns with natural materials so like flowers and um i think maybe even herbs i don't know um but yeah I really enjoyed this colorway. Oh, so this is actually dyed with walnut and indigo. Hmm, how interesting. But yeah, I think that will be also a very lovely addition to the color family that I plan on having in my sweet shop blanket. So it's this type of darkish blues and greens, and then I wanna have kind of darkish yellows and purples and maybe a dark red. That's kind of what I have in my head right now. So I'm just starting to collect all the different yarns and then see what I have. And then I'll just, I think, just start working away on it and have it sit in my stash. And whenever I feel like it, I'll pick it up and knit a square. That's kind of what I plan on doing with it. Yeah, so that's all the yarns that I have gotten from Glasgow School of Yarn and that I've purchased. And then, like I said, I had a deluxe ticket, so I got this wonderful bag with it. In the bag was a little skein of Ripple, Ripple's Craft yarn, which is a wonderful kind of bluey, purpley dyed color. Very pretty. <laughs> and also, I think, stitch stoppers from the love of yarn. Some wonderful stitch stoppers. There were some lovely stitch stoppers to add to my growing collection of stitch toppers because I seem to be collecting this now. <laughs> and then the last thing that I got that was not yarn related, and I think it's actually the first time that I remember, I've been for the past three years, and it's the first time that I've seen something that is not kind of yarn or notions related in, at Glasgow School of Yarn. And it's a little kind of stationery stand that's related to knitting station, not knitting stationery, but kind of cards and what did you have cards postcards notebooks that are um related to knitting and crafting and i got this one it says one day all of this will be worn and i plan on putting it onto my swatch wall that i have over there and i got this one too which says all the yarn not enough time which i think is very fitting so that was very cute um, to see and if I had more real life knitting friends I would have definitely gotten a few more cards but I think all my friends would be like why are you sending me this Maria it doesn't make any sense to me uh, this was from Tilly Flop so yeah 
Glasgow School of Yarn was absolutely wonderful this year, really enjoyed it. I'm starting to know a few people kind of in Glasgow who are in the knitting scene and I'm always enjoying the show, but this year particularly because I could actually chat to a few people and like I said, I really enjoyed Graham's talk. That was very eye-opening and very interesting. So definitely have a look at Kate Miss Yarns. It's wonderful to hear a story like that from somebody who holds sheep in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I whizzed through everything a little bit, but that's mainly because the light is leaving me and also it's Anna's bedtime. <laughs> so I have to get going. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the few clips of the Glasgow School of Yarn this year at the beginning of this video. I will link all the vendors that I'm showing down below in the description box. Let me maybe know what you guys like to knit with hand dyed yarn. I'm really curious because I rarely make full on garments with it. What I usually do is incorporate it into parts of it. So for example, I would knit maybe the foot and part of the cuff for a sock with it or I would knit it into stripes of jumpers, but I rarely do a full on hand dyed knit. So I wonder how you guys like to use your hand dyed yarns. That would be something lovely to pop down in the comments below. If you like this video, if you want to see more, there is a whole podcast playlist that you can watch. Um, so go check that out. I'm very active on Instagram. Um, it's all at Wild Knits Glasgow. And yeah, have a look there. Like I said, two, well, when this comes out one week until the Momo sweater comes out, so I can't wait. I'm very, very excited. And I think there'll probably be a special episode just about that. I have filmed a lot during the making and designing process. So I do plan on sharing bits of that with you guys. And yeah, I don't know what else there is to say. I feel like nothing. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you again in the next video. Bye! <laughs>